If you're taking intro physics and you don't like trigonometry, there's good news and bad news. The good news is you don't need most of this. The bad news is the part you do need, you will need all the time. So you've got to get used to it. When things move around in two dimensions, they're going to have directions we need to describe, which means we need angles, which means we need a little bit of trigonometry. We do this with vectors. Vectors have size and direction. They need sets of numbers, two numbers in two dimensions, components to describe them. We draw vectors as arrows, and vectors are contrasted with scalars, which are just regular numbers. You only need one number to describe distance, or speed, or time, or mass, or energy, but quantities in physics that have directions are displacement, velocity, position, acceleration, force. These are just some of them. There are plenty more. Here's a typical problem from the beginning of physics. I walk 30 degrees north of east for 5 kilometers, and then 3 kilometers due southeast. How far am I from my starting point, and in what direction? This is a problem in adding vectors. This is the core skill that I'm going to teach you in this video. It is absolutely vital that you get this skill down if you want a good grade in physics. I'm going to walk through this problem step by step, and the first step in solving any problem is understanding what it's asking for and what it's saying. So this first part, 30 degrees north of east for 5 kilometers, what is that talking about? What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. East is to the right, north is up on this picture. So 30 degrees north of east means you turn 30 degrees from east towards north. The second expression, due southeast, means exactly halfway between east and south. So it makes a 45 degree angle with the east and the south axes. When we put all that together into one picture, it looks like this. Starting from the origin, we go 5 kilometers, 30 degrees north of east, and then we turn so that we're facing southeast and go 3 kilometers. The arrow drawn in green is the total, sometimes called the resultant, and we want to know how long that is and in what direction. That's the goal of the problem, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. There are multiple ways to add vectors. We can do it graphically, we can do it with advanced trigonometry, or we can do it by breaking into components. That last one is the technique I'm going to show you. When adding vectors by components, there are three main steps. We're going to break each vector up, we're going to add the components, and we're going to put the final answer back together. This is a special case of the problem-solving technique, where if you have a hard problem, one thing you can do is rewrite it as an easy problem. Solve that to get the easy answer, and then rewrite the easy answer back to give the final hard answer, which is what you want in the first place. This is a very general problem-solving technique. Step 1. Break up vectors into components. The good news is, this might already have been done for you. It depends on how the information on vectors was given to you in the problem. So we need to understand how to write vectors and how you might read them. Here are just some of the ways that vectors can be written. So you might find any of these in a problem. The most common are going to be the two at the top, a verbal description or a picture. Often you need to make the picture yourself. A lot of the other forms below, where you have 4.33 and 2.5, those are the components. If they give those to you, we've already got step one completed. But life isn't always that easy. Check out the other videos in my Physics 1 playlist if you need more detail on how to turn English into a diagram. Now, let's assume that you've gotten this far and you have 5 kilometers and 30 degrees drawn like this. What do we do with this? How do we proceed? I'm going to go step by step. First, we draw the x and y axes. There's no wrong choice for how to do it, some will be easier than others. I'm going to use standard position here because I don't have any pressing reason not to. You can always use that as a default if you want. Second step. 
we're going to go to the head of the arrow, the point, and we're going to draw two lines, one parallel to the x-axis and the other parallel to the y-axis. This will draw a box. Notice that the original vector that we are breaking up is always, always the hypotenuse. The vector divides the box into two triangles. We can use either one. There's no wrong choice for that. I'm going to pick the lower one, just for simplicity. Next step, we're going to name the two sides of the triangle that aren't the hypotenuse. Let's say the original vector is capital A. In that case, the horizontal and vertical parts of the triangle we're going to call a sub x and a sub y, or axay for short. This is our goal. ax and ay are the two things we want. We want to know how long they are, in this problem, in kilometers. And this, finally, is where the trigonometry is going to show up. Let's review. Every right triangle has three sides, the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. The longest side is always the hypotenuse, and remember, that's what we're going to use for the original vector we're trying to break up. The two components we're trying to find are the legs. One of them's the opposite, the other is the adjacent. But we don't know which is which yet. We have to choose the angle. Let's choose the angle that was actually given to us in the problem. I'm going to label that theta. Once we know which angle is theta, then we know that the side opposite to it is the opposite, and the side next to it is the adjacent. We had to specify that, because if we choose the other angle, beta, then opposite and adjacent are swapped. We don't want to do that, so let's stick with the one we have. Comparing with the earlier diagram, we see that ax is the adjacent, and ay is the opposite. Now back to these. We only need the first two lines right now. What we're going to do is fill these in with the values given in the problem. Here are the values, and when we plug things in, we get the last two lines. Our next step will be to multiply both sides of those last two lines by, in this case, 5 kilometers. Now we have expressions for ay and ax, and all we have to do is evaluate them. To do this, you're going to need a calculator. This is my calculator, the TI-83+. Plus. Yours might look different, and that's fine, but somewhere on it you need three buttons, sin, cos, tan. On mine, there are two rows above the 789. If I press the SIN sign button, and then type in 30, and press enter, I'll get the sine of 30, which should be 0.5. I type in cosine 30, and I'll get about 0.866. But when you do that, you might get these numbers instead. What went wrong? The calculator has different modes. It can be degrees mode or radians mode. My calculator has a mode button next to the yellow button, and when I press it, it will show me what mode we're in. My calculator has a lot of different modes, but the third row you can see there's radians and degrees, and radians is highlighted. That's the problem. Use the arrow keys and enter to switch it from radians to degrees. How do I know that's the right mode? Because the problem said 30 degrees, not 30 radians. Now when I put in sine 30, enter, cosine 30, enter, I get the right answers. So the expression for ay is 5 kilometers times sine 30 degrees, which the calculator says is 2.5 kilometers. That's a y. And 5 times cosine 30 is 4.33, and that is a sub x. So we have a sub x, a sub y as 4.33 kilometers, 2.5 kilometers. That's what we wanted. As I said, solving this kind of problem takes place in three steps. We have to break each vector up, add the components, and put the final answer back together. Have we finished step one? Well, we broke the first vector. We still have to do this exact same process and break up the other vector. I'll go through this one faster, and it's all the exact same steps. 
here's a list of all the steps we went through. We draw the vector, we choose the xy axes, we draw parallel lines through the head, we choose one triangle of the box, we choose one angle in the triangle, we name the sides of the triangle, we write the Sokotoa equations, we fill them in, we solve the equations for the components, and then we calculate the components. The problem says that I walk three kilometers due southeast, so this is our picture. Now when we're adding vectors together, we only get to choose the xy axes once. From that point we have to be consistent. So positive x is still to the right, is east, and negative y is south to be consistent. Next we draw the parallel lines to make the box. The vector divides the box into two triangles, lower and upper, and this time I'm going to choose the upper triangle. There's no particular difference between the two choices. Now I give variable names to the sides of the triangle. Since the first vector I called a, I'll call the second vector b, so its components are b sub x and b sub y. Notice that since the vector points to the right, b sub x is going to be a positive number, and since the vector points down, b sub y is going to be a negative number. Since I'm using a positive 45 degrees, that means I have to insert a minus sign to say that the opposite is negative b sub y, not just b sub y. Some people deal with this instead by doing the sign of negative 45 degrees, which would also work. I don't usually do it that way, it just comes down to what feels more natural for you. In the end, what matters is that b sub x comes out positive and b sub y comes out negative. So these are the components of the second vector and we have finally finished step one of solving this problem. Good news, that was the longest step. Now that we've broken the vectors up, we add the components. This is the easy step. Since the first two vectors I named A and B, I'd be tempted to name the third vector C, but a name you will commonly see in physics problems is R for resultant. The total of the vectors is the resultant. So we can call the parts of the answer, the components, r sub x and r sub y. And you get r sub x by adding a sub x and b sub x. And you get r sub y by adding a sub y and b sub y. It really is that simple. Okay, we finally have r sub x and r sub y. The first two steps of the problem are done. Now we just have to put those back together. Now some problems might simply ask for the components and that would be the answer. But most often, they want to know the magnitude and the direction of the final vector. In other words, they want you to answer the question in the same language in which it was asked. So we know the two sides, Rx and Ry, and we want the hypotenuse R and the angle phi. That's our new goal. To find R, the hypotenuse, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, which says for right triangles that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And since we know a and b, we can solve for c. When we do that, we get the final magnitude, the final distance, 6.46 kilometers. Notice that that's barely more than rx, which is true because we're almost going entirely in the x direction. There's only a little bit in the y direction, so that will sometimes happen. Also, note that the answer is not 41.74. I mean, obviously you don't walk 41 kilometers to go to that spot, but it's important to remember to take the square root. That's a very common mistake, so watch out for that. Okay, almost done. The last thing we need is to find the angle phi. To do that, we're going to use the third trig function, tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Since we know that Ry is 0.38 kilometers and Rx is 6.45 kilometers, we can plug those into the equation for tangent. When we do that, kilometers cancel in the fraction, so we have 0.38 over 6.45. We divide those and get 0.0589. That is not the angle, that is the tangent of the angle. So now, how do we get from the tangent to the angle itself. We use the function called inverse tangent or arctangent. 
If you look at the tangent button on my calculator, you'll see that written above it in yellow is TAN with a minus one. That stands for inverse tangent. The way you get that is you press the yellow button and then the tangent button to produce the inverse tangent. So to get the answer on my calculator, I press the yellow button and then the tangent button, and then I type in 0 0.0589 and press enter. The result is 3.37, and that is in degrees. When you take a sine, cosine, or tangent, you are putting in degrees to get out the trig value. But with the inverse trig button, you start with the ratio, take the inverse trig, and that will give you back the angle. In this case, in degrees, because the calculator is in degrees mode. So here's the answer to the problem. The distance is 6.46 kilometers and the angle is 3.37 degrees. But we want to answer the question in the same language it was asked. Let's look at the problem statement again. It asks, how far am I from my starting point and in what direction? So we have to say those. The answer is, I am 6.46 kilometers from my starting point in a direction 3.4 degrees north of east. And that, finally, is our answer. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you very much for watching.